Hello again, everyone. It's Michael Friedrich here from beautiful North Carolina. I'm going to be doing a shave today with uh, with two new products. I'm going to be talking about a third that I am not using, and you'll soon find out why. Um, first of all, let me just say welcome to the uh, to the recent spate of new YouTube uh, YouTube subscribers. I hope you guys are still enjoying these videos. Uh, I know they're not too frequent, but uh, maybe that sort of adds to the uh, <laughs> adds to the interest. Um, I'm going to be talking today about uh, a new brush and a new soap. I'm going to be shaving today, however, with an old favorite, the Jaws from Razor Rock. I have left behind the Super Speed flare tip. Um, it's the end of the month. I've switched to another razor, so I'll be shaving with the Jaws again for the rest of August. I don't think I'll be going back to the uh, to the Super Speeds. They just do not work that well for me. So, even though it's quite a nostalgic uh, trip to the past to use those old razors and they still function great, they just do not work that well for me. All right, I've already prepped my face. I have some of the uh, the Vitos pre-shave on. Let me talk about the uh, the brush and the soap. So for today, I'm going to be using my custom, an absolutely gorgeous olive wood brush from Rod Neep. This is a extra dense silver tip badger, 26 millimeter knot with a 50 millimeter loft. Um, I've never owned a badger brush this nice. It is absolutely fantastic. It is a very, very different face feel than something like the Samoog 1250, the bore brush. Uh, if you are looking for a change up, um, I can definitely highly recommend going to one of these extra, extra dense badger brushes. If you sort of own a lower end badger and it's too prickly or too stiff, um, then this may well be the way to go. They are of course a bit pricier, but it may well be worth saving up your pennies and going for something like this. Um, I'm also going to be using a the soap, a British classic that my wife brought back from London for me. See if you can guess what that is. Uh -huh. That's going to be tough, isn't it? Well, that is the check and speak number 88. Um, talk about the scent in just a moment. But while I get lathering, let me just talk about the other soap that she brought back, which was also a very highly rated sort of classic British shaving product, which was the Penhaligon's, the Blenheim Bouquet. Now that soap just getting the check and speak going here. That soap did not work out at all. In fact, I would just say simply avoid that for the price that uh, the Penhaligans is absolutely just not worth it. It just did not lather properly at all. It is a non-tallow-based soap, um, which doesn't mean that it won't work well, just in that particular soap, just not good at all. There's plenty of non-tallow soaps that are fantastic. The Penhaligans, absolutely not. It used to contain tallow um, and it was reformulated, no longer does not worth it at all. I'm using it as a uh, as a body soap right now and it's disappearing very rapidly. The Check and Speak number 88 is a tallow based soap, apparently made by Bellabra. And this is a completely different uh, product than the uh, than the Penhaligans. This does lather very nicely. I'm building this lather a little bit slowly. I will say this for the soap. Uh, if you're using a bore brush, it will tear into the soap easily. And what I'm finding is with these extra dents with a silver tip, a little bit wetter brush is required, sort of get into the soap. I always soap, I have to soak it before I actually get lathering. Um, I don't really want to just, you know, rip into this with this brush. This uh, soap apparently sort of has, it has two, two layers of scent. Um, the first is something like geranium, a bit of bergamot, some rose auto. Pretty, pretty deep, pretty complex, and it's quickly replaced by more woodsy notes, as they describe it, and vetiver. And to me, this is this is a combination of scents I would not normally pick for myself, but it definitely has a very classic, kind of deep, muskier, I would finger quote, masculine scent. The early notes of the rose auto and the geranium, the bergamot, those for me at least tend to disappear pretty quickly. Dominated by the more, the heavier sense of the vetiver. All right, I'm going to put a bit more water on there. I really do like the performance of the soap though. Scent notwithstanding, scent is not the scent I would choose. I definitely understand this is a wonderfully classic Shaving scent, they of course make an aftershave and an eau de cologne. You know, these scents are used across their product line.
But, you know, this is a very smooth, easy to lather, nice towel based soap. There we go. Plenty of left in there. And what I have noticed with the badger is that it looks like there's not that much lather in the brush, but a lot of lather tends to collect along the base of it. And you can simply just move that back onto the brush, keep lathering. Loving the shape on that handle is olive wood. I went for the uh, sort of the hourglass shape, slightly larger because I've got larger hands. Uh, brush has been absolutely fantastic. Just loving it. The wooden handle is 100% um, my favorite. So here goes razor rock jaws. This is, for those of you who have not shaved with these before, this is a relatively uh, cheap brush, a cheap, uh, cheap razor in the scheme of things. Um, I will say this is heavy, it's well balanced, and it does offer a pretty aggressive shave. So uh, I find myself in the morning at least shaving a little more slowly, a little more care and attention than I was with the super speeds. And my flare tip is just too mild in the shape of the head. It just doesn't work for me. Yeah, there we go. Nice and easy. Good, good slick leather. I've also continued oop, it's hard to shave and talk at the same time um, I've also tried to continue with the uh, no lather no shave part <laughs> which is so much harder than you think and for a lot of days I am not, unlike many of you out there, I am not chasing the, the BBS all the time. I'm definitely falling more in the camp of, I'd rather shave with no irritation than try to achieve the baby butt smooth. which at least for me, and probably like for many of you, really only lasts a couple hours. I'd much rather have a little bit of stubble for you pushing against the grain than irritated skin. New Voshkod blade, still liking those a lot. Okay, first pass done. Not trying to rush, but trying to keep this under time a little bit. I will say in terms of blades, I have to say, Voshkod is still way up there for me. The Gillette blue, the dark blue, very close second. If the Bosch cards were no longer available, I'd be more than happy to uh, to go for those. I know a lot of people love the Astra Platinums. Just haven't shaved with those enough to really be able to say whether that be sort of top three or top five. But right now I have a pretty large stash on the Bosch cards and feel no need to purchase additional blades when those run out. I'm sure there'll still be blades to purchase. There's also been some interesting threads lately about from the Facebook group, The Big Shave, and hi everyone from The Big Shave. Interesting threads about how much to purchase and how much stuff people have and the enormous size of people's shave dens. And um, yes, I am sometimes pointed out as one of the more minimalist people. And that, that is definitely true. I, I went for quite a while with one razor, Mercury 23C, with my Sabi Badger brush, that was it. And I think I had one cream and one soap. That was it. And all right, this across the grain pass. 
but I tried to stick with that a little bit because it is amazing how the draw of new products, it just seems unending. And so I have really stuck with, you start a soap or cream, you work through that until it's gone and then on to the next one. So that you don't end up with this collection of products that one, sometimes you don't even remember that you had and two, that you're not even using and sometimes not using for a long time. At that point, maybe something else has come along that's sort of the, you know, the more recent fancy of the shaving world, maybe some new moons or mics or So what I did to stem the acquisition disorders, the multiples that there were, I stuck with an old it's a video game box. And if a product couldn't fit in there, if it was full, no more. And so in order to make space for something new, had to use something old. <laughs> it's really cut down on that sort of a languishing collection of shape products you're just not using. Yeah, and there's always this, uh, this fear that a product you love It's going to be withdrawn from the market literally days after you discover it. And then what would you do? There's always this sense of the impending shave apocalypse where abruptly every manufacturer of shaving products suddenly realized that there's no money in this. No one's buying them. That's it. Take everything off the shelves. And that Penhaligans, that Blenheim bouquet is a great example. So that was once a very highly rated product. People loved it, was reformulated. People stopped buying it. A vendor recently discovered a small cache of original Tallow based versions of that puck of soap sold one per customer. Boom, of course, they're sold out and sold out almost immediately. But it's not like if you didn't buy that particular puck of that soap, you would somehow be shut out from an enormous range of other exceedingly good products. And if you, if you never got to use that old version, the old towel formulation of the Blenheim bouquet. And all you ever got to shave with was, let's say, Mike's Natural Soaps or Queen Charlotte or the Newman's or the Kalani, which was fantastic. Or the Chung Fung Sing soaps that are completely vegetable based and not towel based and also amazing soaps. You know, you would literally never be missing out. So I feel like, you know what? You have so many great options. There's always stuff out there. Enjoy what you have. You have a lot of really great stuff to choose from. Don't be so worried about the stuff that you're missing out on. And it also happens sometimes, and this, I, I you know, does happen. People get very excited about sort of hopping onto the next new thing, and it turns out, for them, not a good choice. Doesn't lather, irritates your skin. too menthol -y, whatever. A little resistance there against the grain on the chin.
a little bit of tugging. I'm also going a little too quick, so. Normally in the mornings I'm doing just a two pass. Okay. Done. Go ahead and rinse my face. Yeah, I will say for the, for the Jaws, it's a big, big switch coming from the super speeds, which, you know, for me, like I said, a little too mild. I find myself wanting to go over it again and again and again. Um, this, definitely a much more aggressive razor, and it means you can slow down a little bit and still in a two-pass shave get, I think, easily as close as I was getting with the three plus. Um, I also feel much less need with that razor. Trying to, to go back and do, do touch-ups, I feel like that's already... Very, very good close shave. Um, so, before I put the aftershave on, let's just review. Fantastic olive wood hourglass handle, extra dense silver tip badger, 26 millimeter knot, 50 millimeter loft. I think it's fantastic. Uh, you definitely need to watch with some of the harder soaps, add a bit of extra water. It doesn't tear into it quite like the uh, like a boar brush does. Doesn't matter, still does fantastic. Check and speak, tallow-based, 88, very, very nice soap. Um, I guess I have put this into a repurposed Pro Rosso container for the evil eye among you. Um, I realize that's sort of a clash of cultures for those two to mix, but I don't care. I'm living on the edge. Um, let me put some aftershave on. Still working through the Mirasol Agua de Limon. Um, I was really hot on this first, really liked it. Had a brief period where like, no, nah, I'm not so sure that's for me. Now it's a little bit warmer again. Yep, and quite enjoying this again. I don't know that this would be a long-term favorite, but definitely feels very nice hot weather. Yep, beautiful, smooth, easy shave. The other interesting thing is because, of course, I do like sort of the more citrusy scents and this, uh, the check and speak is sort of a heavier, denser, woodsier smell. I don't have a, you know, I only have this aftershave and a little bit of the Floyd Blue left. I don't really have a good pairing. So ironically, even though I like this aftershave, it is kind of a clash with the 88. So that's, you know, just, that's what you, that's what you have to live with. Oh, well. Well, that's it for me, everybody. Thank you all so much again for watching. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. Enjoy your weekend if you're watching this over the weekend. And I hope we will see you soon again. And thanks again for all the new subscribers. And salutes back out to the big shave. Guys, hang in there. Things are going great. If you're interested in traditional wet shaving, I highly recommend that you link, look at the link below. And there will be a link there to the, uh, to the big shave Facebook group if you're interested in joining that. Other than that, thank you all very much for watching again. And until next time, bye-bye.